All right, everybody, it is time to figure out what I'm doing. All right, here we are. I'm going to close the sound out of that because that's really disorienting. Okay, I got a lot of stuff going on here. Let me get my camera. Ugh. All right, hey, if uh, you're in the house, start, drop a note in the chat box, say, yo, what's up? I'm here. Um, so uh, we'll get started here in a minute, but if uh, you are not on, on board and uh, with the how we do this for professional development, um, I am going to put up a URL here in a second, and that's going to take you through our agenda as we work through this today. So I'll go ahead and pop that up over here. Uh, you want to go to this website, bit.ly slash FPS TT, just Tech Tuesday, and then go ahead and sign in here at that sign in link. And there's a couple other things. Um, hopefully, y'all can hear me. Let me check the volume. Yeah, I think we're good on that. Um, go ahead and that's right, y'all. Hey, um, FMS people showing up, even when you got your own little thing in the library today. So, way to go, Miss Yates. Um, Go ahead and log in uh, to this website, bit.ly slash FPS TT, that's for Tech Tuesday, and then go ahead and click on this link to sign in, and a couple other things while you're doing that, um, we want to make sure that you're using a Chrome browser, so if you're on a Chromebook, uh, everything we do today, will you don't have to worry about it. If you're on something that's not a Chromebook, please make sure that uh, you can install this Chrome web app called Screencastify. Um, and that's just a link to the actual web store to install that software. It will take you just a moment. So uh, get those things done, and then we'll start here in a couple of minutes. And I'll, I'll do a short little walkthrough of Screencastify installing that. So if you don't have it at this point, and this is the main app we're going to be using today is Screencastify. Um, I am... If you click on that, it will take you to the link for the Chrome Web Store. It looks like this. Uh, you're going to click over here where it says Add to Chrome, the blue button. And then you're going to click Add Extension. I'm on a Windows computer, but it shouldn't matter the type of computer you're on. If you're using Chrome, you'll be fine. Uh, once you've actually installed it, you'll want to click on the, it's hard to see on my computer because of my toolbar, the color is the same as the app, but the app looks like this. It's like a piece of a film strip. So that's what you'll want to um, find. It'll be uh, up here when you install it. So after you install it, you'll go ahead and click on it and you have to do a brief setup with your account. So, uh, you all are hopefully logged in already with a Google account. Um, so just click here to sign in with Google. Hey, Ms. Crawford in the house. Glad that you're here. Um, I'm going to click sign in with Google. And when you do that, it will prompt you, um, usually to click your, uh, the, your little face picture, whatever your avatar is. And then it'll say um, a couple of things it needs permission to do. You're going to tell Chrome that it's okay if it uses your camera and a microphone. And you're going to say it's okay if you can draw and annotate on top of other websites. And we're going to allow that and click allow up here. And I don't know, it's been saying there's a problem. Please refresh the page. If you refresh the page, everything is fine. So then it'll say, that's it. Time to record your first video. So we want to just make sure that you have Screencastify extension installed onto Chrome because it is the thing that holds everything else together for this session today. Um, so that's how we get started. If there's any questions, like I said, go ahead. Oh, whoa, Coach DeFilly in the house. What's up, John? Um, if there are any questions, chat box is a good place to do it. You can also call my extension 8213. Um, Voxer or whatever, but it's hard for me to know if you have something, so ch chat box is the quickest way if you ever have questions. All right, we are going to hop back over here to the to my screen, and I am going to do a brief screencasting intro. If you are just getting here, you want to go to this link, bit.ly. 
I, that's what okay, I'm doing that right now. bit.ly slash fpstt, and that's going to bring you to this web page that I'm on right now. And all the whole pre session runs through this, all these links. And all I've talked about so far is installing Screencastify, making sure that you have that installed extension onto your Chrome browser. Yeah, Heather Yates, already the big dork using this. Way to go, Mrs. Yates, you rock. Okay, um, hopefully you will get some new uses out of this today. I'm going to do a variety of uses for doing screencasts today. I'll show you some examples of things that I have done screencasts for in the past, and also some creative ways that you can have fun with it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up just a brief little what is a screencast not really I wouldn't say a lesson just an intro for those of you who maybe have never done screencasting in your classroom before so let's talk about what a screencast is screencast is just recording what's happening on your screen and if you think about um, what that entails if you put your face on there like you have your webcam embedded or if you uh, have your microphone on and you record narration at the same time uh, there's a lot of cool, interesting, unique, fun things that you can do with that. So, uh, oh, well, you got to wait till the end, my friend. We are going to do the rocket book drawing at the end. So hopefully um, this is interesting enough for you to stick around for that. Um, I'm going to come to the next slide. These are the six things that I'm going to talk about with screencasts today. The first is going to be flip lessons, flip learning. Then we'll talk about using it for review lessons. We'll talk about using it as an assessment tool. Then we will talk about using it to give students feedback. We will talk about using it for subplans. And then finally, we'll wrap up with creative student projects. Um, so flip learning, if you're not sh familiar with what that is, flip learning is just taking a lesson and making it so a student can access that lesson on their own time, not necessarily during class time. So, hey, Johnny, I know you weren't in class today. Go and watch the video on the YouTube channel to know what we did. Lesson review. So this would be good for your students who are struggling in your class. You can record lessons of you teaching your stuff and then send that to them so they can look at it as many times as they want. It would be also good to give to parents or tutors to use um, to give them uh, kind of the instructional basis for doing review and stuff with the, the students from your class. For assessment, you can have students create their own screencasts where they do an explanation of a process. Uh, they can explain something as they're creating it, as they're modeling it, as they're labeling it. Uh, and sometimes that's good in classes where you don't necessarily need to be great at composition, but you have to still be able to explain how something works or why something does what it does. So kids can record themselves uh, as an assessment. For feedback, this is how I graded a lot of my papers uh, when I was teaching ELA, is I would record the kid's screen. And when we use Screencastify, we can actually do annotations on top. So I can like highlight stuff, tell them what they did well, what they didn't do so hot, uh, um, and then they can look at the video and they get, it's like I, it's like I'm having a conference with them right there. Um, and finally, substitute, well I got one more here, but substitute plans, um, if you ever are not in the class, the best substitute is yourself, so just uh, record yourself doing the lesson, uh, record yourself uh, setting expectations for class that day, that stuff all... Um, that's how I always did subs, and it made it so much easier to write sub plans because I didn't have to put every single little detail. Um, good question from Heather. Yes, yeah, students can do screencasts. They have access to this app. It is one that I have told Dan to make sure all students have. So it should already be on all students' Chromebooks. Um, so back to sub, sub plans. Um, so I would have to write so much less in my sub plans because I could literally have a video where I could explain how stuff worked in my, cl in my classroom. And finally, creative student projects. We'll talk about animations, games, um, having students make stories, uh, story videos, stuff like that. So that's just the basics for what you can do with screencasts. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get started with um, some examples of this stuff. So hopefully by this point you have installed Screencastify onto your uh, browser. And this is, uh, if you want to take a couple of minutes and uh, play around with it, you can. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into some uses for it. So you can do this along with me. You can watch. I'll give you some time at the end for exploratory experimentation, etc. So um, I'm going to come down here to where it says using Screencastify to record a lesson plan. And if you click on where it says example, it's just going to uh, force you to copy a money lesson plan. 
these are just stuff that I have accumulated over years and years of teaching. So this is one that I think I used back in the elementary days for teaching uh, money. So here is how this, uh, the basics of this would work. I pull up my slides lesson plan, and you'll notice that everything I do here is going to either involve slides or an electronic copy of something. It doesn't always have to be a slide. So I go through here, and I know what I'm going to teach. So I come up here to my Screencastify icon. And this will be good to learn the basics of using the screencast. Um, so we'll just we'll start with that. Once you go up and hit that icon, you'll have three tabs. You have the tab record, which is to record the tab that you have open. You have desktop, which is to record your entire desktop. And then you have cam, which will just record your webcam. I'll get to the file type in just a second. Then, then down along the side you have your microphone, so this will record the microphone. If it's you have a Chromebook, you have a built-in microphone. Um, if you have a, a Mac, a Mac top or a uh, iMac in your classroom, those have a built-in microphone. If you have a Windows computer, you do not have a built-in microphone. Um, tab audio will record any system audio that comes from that tab. And then you can also embed your webcam, and that will... I can't actually show you how to do that. Hey, what's up, Taylor? Glad you made it. Um, I can't actually show you embed my webcam because I'm using my webcam for the broadcast right now. But whenever you put up your webcam, it'll just pop up here, and you can pick the corner that you want it to set in. All right. Um, okay. And then the, there are slight differences. If you want to record your desktop, that's going to be more than just the tab. That's going to be every single thing that's showing on your desktop. So that means you could uh, have other outside apps. You could have stuff that's not necessarily part of Google Chrome if you have like other computer programs that you want students to have access to. And then your cam is just your web camera that's built in. So again, if you have a Chromebook um, or you have an iMac, you will have a built-in camera. If you have a Windows desktop PC, you will not have a built-in camera. Uh, you'll have to uh, procure one of those um, to work uh, uh, otherwise. All right, so here's how I would start my lesson. I'm going to go ahead and click up here, Screencastify. I'm going to do a tab recording right here, and I want my microphone to be on. And I'm going to click Record Tab. Now, whenever I do this, I get a little countdown. I don't know if you can hear that. And now it's recording, and I know that it's recording because I have a little red dot up here in my toolbar. If you can see me pointing at that right there. Um, and so from this point on, it would record whatever I'm doing. So I would be like, hey, kids, it's Mr. Howard. Today we're going to talk about money. Do you know what these different types of money are? Well, as we work through today's lesson, we'll find out all about different types of monies, right? So I'm going to go to the next slide, and that's when we get down here into our tools. So you'll notice when you run a Screencastify session that you have stuff like a pin. So I can say this right here is a nickel, and this right here is a dime, and does anybody know what the one that's circled in green is? Well, that, my friends, is a quarter, right? So I am going through and I'm teaching. You can also erase this stuff. Um, the camera button is uh, you, to embed your webcam. You can go mouse pointer. That just gives you a, a pointer that you can point at stuff. Um, and all of these just do different things. So it's worth experimenting with while you're recording a lesson. Um, this down here allows you to pause your recording. So at this point, my recording is paused. It's not doing it's not recording anything I'm saying or anything I'm doing on my screen. And if I look up here in my toolbar, I see that it has the pause button on it. So that means anything that's happening is pause. So if I gag, I need to drink a water, if I forgot how to teach this thing, um, if I left my brain at home today, I can pause and go back look over my notes and make sure that I know what I'm going to say next, right? Um, so after I'm done with my lesson, I'm going to hit end recording here. And the thing about Screencastify is as soon oh hello that's what i was just gonna say the thing about screencastify is that as soon as you stop a recording it gives you a your your video file is ready to go so from this point uh we had a question about file types um a second ago um there's two ways that you can share this out for students the first is this automatically saves to google drive and that is the number one reason that we want to use screencastify is because you can save as many of these as you want, and your students on Chromebooks can save as many of these as they want without having to have hard drive storage space. So you can record a million minutes of Screencastify videos and save them to your Google Drive. Now, 
if I want to have access to that, I can click on the Google Drive link and it will take me to my video. I can click download and now I'll have that video on my computer. Um, I can then upload it to my Google Classroom. I can email it out to my students. And if they click on that link, it's, it's a WebM extension. If they click on that link, they will be able to watch that video, okay? So I'm gonna go back to um, this page. Now the other thing that you can do to share this out is if you hit the share button up here, and this is how I do most of my sharing, you have the option to have a YouTube channel, and I have a YouTube channel, so I wanna upload this to YouTube, and that way I can send this link to anybody, I can embed it into other stuff, I can make a short link out of it. There's like a million different ways I can share it when I have it as YouTube. And if you don't want other people to be able to find it, you can just come down here and make it unlisted or private. So private means only you can see it till you're ready for somebody else. Unlisted means nobody else can't nobody else will be able to find it unless you give them the link to it. So I'm gonna close that out and here is what your final lesson would end up looking like for students. And now it's recording, and I know that it's recorded to Toolbar. Um, today we're going to talk about money. Do you know what these different types of money are? Well, as we work through today's lesson, we'll find out all about different types of loans, right? So I'm going to go to the next slide. And All right, so I'm going to pause it here, but I think you get the idea is that they can then watch this. Um, most devices will play a .webm link, yes. Um, it just really depends from device to device, but that's another reason why I like to put stuff on YouTube because uh, anything will play a YouTube link as long as you're online, right? Um, there's other ways you can convert these files. It's really not worth it. Uh, it's either you want to use it on a Chromebook, use WebM. If you want to share it in any other way, just upload it to YouTube and share a YouTube link in that way. All right, I'm going to close back out of this. I'm going to come back over to our lesson page. So that's just the basics of recording a lesson. That's really a pretty, a pretty simple thing uh, for getting started. Now we're gonna talk about um, using it to give feedback. And that just means a kid has turned something in. Um, okay, so the question is, if I wanna share a video to a parent, I would uh, upload it to YouTube and send a YouTube link. But you can also, if you email a WebM file, they, could, they should be able to open that in their email and their computer should be able to open it. Um, most parents might not know what a WebM file is. They might think you're trying to like, uh, you know, give their computer a virus or something so just if you send a YouTube link uh, usually that will give you a preview thumbnail and you can play it right in your email at least that definitely works uh, for us in Fulton with our Gmail accounts but it might not work if somebody has an outside you know if they have like a Outlook or Yahoo or something like that but it, um, your best bet if you want if you don't want to worry about access to video would be to put it on YouTube and share it that way all right, so let's talk about using it to give feedback. I'm gonna click this first example, and you'll see that when I open this, this is just a scanned in page. Now, I would, I still, whenever I was teaching LA, I still had kids do a lot of handwritten at first anyway, because there's still a lot of value in writing papers this way. You should never, you know, um, not give kids the opportunity to write by hand if they like to do it that way. But I, I really hated marking by hand a thousand different papers. So what I would do is I would have kids uh, scan these in or you could even we had cam scanner apps and they could scan it just in like this and then all I gotta do if I wanna do feedback is I open up my screencast I'm gonna record the tab I'm gonna put my microphone on and I'm gonna hit record tab and now I'm gonna start working Three, through this two, one. so picture this you see a pack of chasing down oh so I'm gonna grab my pen and I'm gonna say a pack of what what did you mean here? A pack of, I don't understand what you're going for there. Um, eating flesh with its meat, tearing teeth. What about the owl? That should be a question mark there, right? So you need to work on that. So this is how I would do feedback on a, a lot of written papers. And it doesn't even have to be like a Google Doc. It could be a scanned in piece of paper. So something like this um, is a great use of Screencastify. I'm gonna go ahead and pause and stop that recording. So picture this, you see a pack of chasing down, oh, so I'm going to grab my pen and I'm going to say, a pack of what? What did you mean here? A pack of, I don't know. And so then all I got to do is for my feedback that I'm giving a student, I send them the link to this video with their paper and then they watch the video. 
and a student is much more likely to watch this video than they are to actually read the feedback that you put on a piece of paper. And I can guarantee you that. If you are a person that ever has to grade papers, you will save yourself so much time doing it this way. It is a game changer for grading papers. But like I said, it does not. this is not something strictly for working in electronic documents. Um, well, this is a, another scanned in page. This would be an example of a younger student work. So here's a page picture, uh, a book that a student put together all about penguins, right? I just do the same thing on here. I read down through it. I give them feedback. I mark it up. I tell them what I think. And all this is is a scanned in uh, set of pages. And it's really easy. If you don't even want to have your students scan in stuff, you can just scan in all your papers one day after uh, class and do it that way. And then the same thing if you wanted to just have a Google Doc. So here is, I just went and pulled up one of my old students' papers that I had from when I was in the classroom still. And I go ahead and pull up my screencast. I hit record tab. It'll do my countdown. Three, two, one. All right, the darkness nays. What the heck do you mean by nays? Okay, I like that. That's good figurative language. I'm going to say that's pretty cool. Uh, meet pony. Meet a pony named Dainty. He is a clumsy pony who likes, who likes visiting a city called Philadelphia. Ooh, clever. I like that. Right? So then I can just... Same thing. I can just mark on this as I uh, uh, mark up this paper. Now, it can be kind of tricky. Some, there might be times when you have to pause it and like scroll down through this to change... Um, the part of the paper that you're marking on so I usually find if you do like a page at a time that's a pretty uh, easy way to do it so um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this I think we get the idea of how you can provide assessment right. feedback for students by using something like Screencastify um, I'm gonna go back to using Screencastify for student work so this is where a student would use Screencastify to create something in lieu of an assignment right um, we, we have kids to write an essay, we have kids write a paper, model, okay, whatever. So I'm going to open up this first one. This is a Google Drawings link to a water cycle model. So whenever I taught uh, elementary school, one of the things we had to, students had to know was the water cycle. So this is a, um, just a blank Google Drawing. And then over in the margin, I put the directions. And it says, illustrate the water cycle using Google Drawings. Include all steps of the water cycle labeled accurately. After you have designed the water cycle, create a screencast where you describe how water moves through the water cycle. Your video should be less than two minutes long. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> so, what? there's a couple of different ways students could do this. They could come up here in the drawing tools, and they could start drawing this stuff out. So I could do scribble, and they could come in here and do arrows and all this kind of stuff, you know, and draw the stuff out. Right. Um, or they could just go right into the screencast, boot up the recording here, Three, two, grab the pen. Yeah. All right, so Mr. Howard, I'm going to school you today on the water cycle. So first you have rain, and that's what we call precipitation. Now that falls down into this lake here, and this lake um, is, uh, I, uh, I don't know. And then uh, it goes back up, the sun shines, and it gets all hot, and it goes up, and that's called condensation, blah, blah, blah. So you see what I'm saying here? I don't know the water cycle off the top of my head. I could probably figure it out if I need to. That's not the point today. The point is this is an interesting uh, way to have a student show you that they know something that's just a little bit different. They're recording this video. They go ahead. They hit pause. They hit stop. And then you can just watch them. Water cycle. So first you have rain, and that's what we call precipitation. Now that falls down into this lake here, and this lake um, is uh, all right. So then I just have to watch a video of my kid showing me off the thing that they are telling me that they know how to do, right? So uh, using Google Drawings and just having that be a basically a blank canvas for a student to record their knowledge or their thinking on is a pretty interesting way to have them show what they know about something. So I'm gonna close out of that one and we'll move on to another example. So example two here is a story written by a student. This is a couple years ago a student wrote this and one of the things that I like to have my students do to publish writing is to take their text 
and to turn it into an audiobook. And that way I can kind of just listen to it. I can listen to their take on it. Or I can even listen to it like in the car while I'm driving home or whatever. So um, if I come in here and I click the screencast button. And I'm going to click uh, record tab. Right? So now I'm going to take the role of the student. Three, two, one. I'm going to actually go into present mode here. Ooh, we're having a, okay here we go a mistake on the moon by me student one sunny day in the year of 2114 third grade student frankie joe was preparing for school frankie you are not going to be late for school again his mother shrieked at him from the kitchen i cooked you the breakfast i cooked you breakfast it's here on the table blah 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 etc etc you get where i'm going with this the student reads the whole thing they move through their slides as they read it and all of a sudden you have an audiobook and this is not something that would be strictly for ELA English language arts projects writing projects a student could use this to show off any kind of presentation if you wanted students to work on presentations but you didn't necessarily want them to have time in class or every student had to come to the front and do their presentation they can do it this way and if you want them to have FaceTime all you got to do is tell them to go ahead and insert their webcam while they're doing it so and that makes it uh, kind of like doing a speech in front of the class all right um so that is how you can turn a story into kind of like an audio book next um we will go to our third student work example we're getting kind of laggy over here so i'm going to close some of the 5,000 tabs that i have open up here Okay, <laughs> um, this one is, yeah, Defil, you're right. Um, it would totally be something you could do to work into a lot of projects kind of like that. Um, I stole this from Matt Miller. Uh, I saw this at a workshop that he did, Ditch That Textbook Guy. Um, this is making an animation to show a process. So this is some sort of science thing, cellular contraction or something. And what the students have done is... They used the every slide to move forward the process of contraction. So if you were to record that, you would have, like, it, it works well on its own if you just go down through the slides. Like, you can see that process happening where the stuff's work, working down through the pump and then the other things start to kind of move. And if you just hold your button down, you can see the uh, the animation happening before your eyes. See how things start to move around. So you can turn that into, like, I don't have to share a Google slide. I don't have to share you a whole bunch of documents and make you goof around with that. I can just record a video, and I can even do a narration while it's happening to explain what's going on. And again, like, in science class, it's important to do some writing, but not every assignment has to have an essay component with it. So if a student can explain to me what's happening here, why do I need a bunch of paragraphs telling me the same thing like if they can just tell me i don't necessarily need that so that's another way you could do this you would just hop over here to your screencast you'd hit record tab boom bing bang and you have Three, yourself two, one an animation all right so my screencast getting kind of laggy um <coughs> all right so i'm gonna stop there all right okay so my screencast getting so that would be the third like student work example. Um, and again, you can put those for any kind of purpose. Remember the first one, all it was was a blank canvas where a student filled in a process or they labeled something that they explained it. The second was just taking the work and publishing it in a with audio and visual instead of just having purely writing things down on a piece of paper. And the last one was to use an animation to record a process, something that you could do by labeling on paper. But also there's another way you could do that by using just Google Slides and recording your thinking there. All right, we're going to move to creative projects now. Uh, the first one, our first creative project is, this is something I actually did with one of my, my own kids, my daughter. She's five. We did a stop motion movie. 
and she used her littlest pet shop toys. And all we did was inside of Google Slides, you can insert an image and that image can be with your camera. So every slide, we took a new picture and we moved stuff around a little bit. And what you end up finding is that you can tell a story with pictures if you just move your toys around a little bit. Um, and then what you do after you go in and you have your story told with pictures is you record it. So now I'm going to record this tab as I go down through these Three, slides. Two, one. And I'm moving through this. And if kids want to, they can even narrate it. They can be like, hey, cat, what are you doing? I'm going for a ride on this skateboard. Look out, guys. Here I go. Woo! All right, I'm going to skate over here. Hey, guys, sorry, I got to go. Woo! Oh, no, where did the cat go? I'm so sad and lonely now that the cat is gone. Oh, no, look out. What is that? Rawr, I'm a lion. I'm going to eat you. Oh, cat. Cat saves the day. Thanks, cat. Woo! Good thing you showed up just at the right time. Hooray! Skate Kitty saves the day again. The end. Alright, so I'm going to hit pause and stop. And now this is a video version of through this. their slides. And if kids want to, they can even narrate it. They can be like, hey, cat, what are you doing? I'm going for a ride on this skateboard. Look out, guys. Here I go. Woo! All right, I'm going to skate over here. Hey, guys, sorry, I got to go. Woo! Oh, no, where did the cat go? I'm so sad and lonely now that the cat is gone. All right, I'm going to pause this because you don't need to experience it again, although it is amazing. But um, what I will say is using pictures and slides, there's a bazillion things you can do with that. It doesn't have to be a goofball stop-motion animation video. You can have kids do a lot of projects to show cause and effect, how one thing's different than another just by taking pictures and looping those together in animations, right? Um, so it's you're only limited by how creative you want to be with it. So I'm going to close back out of Skate Kitty, and we're going to go to our next creative project, the second one. And this is something I do a lot with little kids, but this is really just to show off a concept of what you can do with animations. So we talked about this a little bit before with that uh, cell model that I stole from Matt Miller. But this is an animation I made. I just took a picture of my face. Um, I did a couple of modifications with it to make my mouth move. Um, and then if you go into insert image and you just search from the web, you can go in and look for clip art shoes, right? And so then I can put shoes onto the characters that I design in here. So this is a pretty cool storytelling tool because at that point, after you design and build your animations or whatever you want the story to be told, and again, it doesn't have to be storytelling. It can be showing off a process. It could be showing off all sorts of different things we do in our classes every day. Um, if I go up here and I hit record and I do a tab record again, and even better if you Three, can full screen it. Two. One. So now it's recording this, and I just have to use my keyboard buttons, and it will record everything that happens. Sorry, the first time he's got to load, but there you go. Now you see the idea. All right. Hey, all, it's me, Mr. Howard here to hear him tell you about being cool at technology. Whoop! There goes my hat. Yeah. All right. So again, uh, the creativity is. It, your the job your job is the creativity the tool is pretty easy to use once you know so now how creative this, you want to be with it. it okay um and then i'm going to do our final example over here this will be a student work example all right this is actually a youtube video i recorded this at the metc conference last week and this is a screencast of me playing a video game 
But um, one of the things that I've done with students in the past is to let them record themselves doing the goofy stuff they already do on the internet, but then allowing that to be a assignment for class. So this was an assignment, and it had to be a video game review, right? Well, you don't necessarily have to write out your whole review, but you do need to make sure that the things that would be in the five paragraphs that you were going to have make it make your way into this review so it takes a lot of prep a lot of work a lot of getting started with it before you're allowed to even record or turn it in or anything so here is what this looks like hey, this is mr howard today we're playing moto x3 i want to tell you a couple of things about this game. first of all the graphics in the brake push down to lean back press back on the keys or so here i'm explaining how the game works or to put the game forward so the idea here is all right, so I won't make you watch the whole thing, but the idea here is that if you can have a kid record anything that they want to do on their screen, the possibilities are kind of limitless as to the ways that they can show their learning. You can be very creative with it, even down to this YouTuber Let's Play unit that I used to do in my language arts classes. Okay, um, so I'm going to back up out of there. So I've gone through all of the basic uses stuff that are kind of could be part of your everyday lesson plans if you wanted to work through those. We have about nine minutes left and I have two more things I want to show and then I'll have some time for questions. So uh, first, I, I talked about this earlier, using this for sub plans. So I'm going to show you a YouTube video. This is an actual sub plan that I used when I was still teaching in the classroom. So I wasn't going to be there that day, and I needed to talk about authors' uh, like voice and tone. So I took this lesson, and I probably wouldn't have taught this lesson if I had been there, but I needed something basic that I could facilitate with a sub, because you can, you're can you always rolling the dice when you have a sub. So here is a short and sweet four-minute video about authors' tone that the sub can kind of take off of. Hey guys, Mr. Howard. Today we're going to talk a little bit about tone and mood. You know that we've been talking the, about this uh, the past couple of weeks. Um, tone, we know, is the author's attitude, the way the author feels about a text. And we know that mood is a little bit different than tone. We'll talk more about mood in a second. But you get tone from the way that the author is supposed to feel about something. The words that they use are trying to be funny. So is it so I won't make you watch the whole thing, but even down to the end here, I end this lesson plan with a classroom activity that the substitute is supposed to, um, you know, the, the sub is going to ask these questions. It's literally scripted out, and it's, it's on the smart board screen in the front of the classroom. All right, hey, glad you can make it. Don't worry. Here, here's better than not. Um, so, again, this is going to be up on the board. It, it creates a... Uh, conversation that's going to happen in the classroom that day before they get started on their independent work. Um, I even have ones where I use the annotation tools and I will uh, it'll be like circling the right answers and it'll literally be like a hand over hand walkthrough assignment lesson for that day. Okay, um, last thing uh, I'll, I'll talk about for the sub plan stuff is doing expectations. So every day that I was ever going to be gone I would create a video like this. This is a three minute video. Uh, this was, I guess I was gone on October 22nd. And in the front of my class, I would always have, oh yikes, that's a scary picture. Hey um, guys, I want to go ahead and apologize. I'm not here today. You know, I had to go day, to but day. I would always have a thing like this uh, up in the cold. front of my room. And hey, make sure you have all this stuff ready for class today. We're not going to deal with any of your goofing around all that kind of stuff and then I'd have all the assignments that the seventh graders were gonna work on here's what you're working on today you're gonna but meet instead with me, of really you're gonna meet the, the sub just table, reading that aloud this is work me on a worksheet about main talking idea back specifically there uh, during shared drink day you're gonna work all those on questions that I expect students to have I can address those in this video so this is just kind of a prep for students who are coming in on the day that I'm not going to be there, that I can have a screencast video ready where I can show them all the assignments and stuff they're going to work on before they ever even have to start working on those things. Okay. So we have six minutes left. These things end at 4.30. 
So with the time that's left, uh, this would be, if you have any questions, this would also be a time when you can go ahead and test out with your screencast tools. So go on to that web extension, maybe use some of the examples of stuff that I've posted, play around with it a little bit, um, or find a lesson or something that you have of something that you've used in the past and maybe make a video version out of that that it would be a good time that you for you to experiment with that um so yeah i'm here if you have any questions totally happy to help remember you can the best way to do it is to pop it into the chat box you can also um email me i'll try to get to uh back to you on that as well if you are late and you're just coming in all these resources are going to be right here bit.ly slash fps tt tech tuesday if you go there it's just going to have all the resources all the examples all the links that you need to install software things like that so um yeah uh have some fun with it and experiment with it and then <coughs> in a couple of minutes we're going to do our uh, rocket book drawing so um well actually we'll go hit and do that here in about two minutes because i got to find the rocket book found it okay all right so it is time for our super exciting drawing for this rocket book so last uh, Thursday we had a snow day and that was digital learning day and unfortunately we weren't here that day so on Friday we had our digital learning day and the prize is a rocket book wave and if you are not familiar with a rocket book wave and also you're gonna get these pins a rocket book is a notebook that um well the wave especially is one where once you fill it up you put it in the microwave and you put a cup of water in there and the directions are on here um after a couple minutes it erases everything off of the notebook so you can just use it again now why would you want to do that well a rocket book has built-in connectivity meaning <coughs> you can there's little icons at the bottom, and you can say, if I circle this icon, it's going to email this page to me. If I put an X on this, it's going to email this page to my teaching team, whatever. There's a, it's got, um, you can get digital copies of your notes very easily, and you can share stuff that you write down very easily. So you just have to use these special pins, the friction ball and the friction clicker. And I have a multicolor set here for you guys, as well as a multicolored... You get black, blue, and red on this one. And I think it also comes with one in here. But uh, we actually have to draw the winner. So we didn't really have that many participants, which is a little bit of a bummer. Uh, these are the people who sent stuff out. And we are going to use one of my favorite tools, classtools.net. Uh, let me put this up here. So Class Tools is a website that's got a bunch of stuff like um, random pickers, it's got other stuff, uh, you can make a Facebook page for an historical figure, there's a bunch of graphic organizers, but one of my favorite things on there is the random picker, and we're going to use the typewriter random picker to pick our winner, and if you're in the house, that's going to be so exciting. Alright, at this time, I will be picking the winner. Drum roll, please. And our winner is... It's Katherine Sadowski from Fulton Middle School. I don't think she's here, so I will be delivering that to her tomorrow. I will try to find her tomorrow and get that to her. Um, that's okay if you didn't win. That's okay. We'll be having another competition next month. So, so sorry if that is not, you would not win that. But remember, I give away cool swag all the time. So don't be downhearted. We will find the thing that's going to make you happy, whatever it is. Um, well, uh, if there's no other questions, that is it for YouTube Live at 345. We are 45 minutes in, which means we are done. Uh, this was super fun. I really like doing these things. I hope you guys like them too. If there's something you want me to cover, please contact me and let me know what that is. And we will do a special show just for you. We're going to try to start doing these every week. I think we're going to do one again next week, so hopefully you can make that. But um, 
thank you guys. Uh, this is a big time super blast, and I hope that you can make it again next time. Peace out, my friends. We'll